بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آف دا لینکس لیکچر سیریز ہوپ یو مسٹ ہیو گون تھرو دا پریویس لیکچر دیٹ واز اباؤٹ دا پارٹیشنگ آف دا ہارڈ ڈسک ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ فارمیٹنگ اور the high level formatting of those partitions let us start so before i start talking about formatting of a hard disk drive let's have a brief review of the file system an introduction to file system I have said many a times and you might have heard this that in Unix everything is a file and let me add up today that if it is not a file then it is a process right gentlemen from a user point of view a file is the smallest unit of allocation on secondary storage medium the piece of code that provides an abstraction mechanism let me say that a file system is a piece of code as i always say that everything is a piece of code a file system is a piece of code that provides an abstraction provides an abstraction mechanism to the users as well as to the programs to organize their files without the knowledge of the working of the disk platters the heads the tracks and the sectors we can say that a file system is just like a library system for example a dv decimal system in which the card drawers are used to index all the books over here as well the main purpose is the same we need to keep tracks of the file so the basic functionalities the basic functionalities that every good file system must offer are you should be able to create files creating files by allocating disk blocks or sectors and also keeping track of all the file blocks the next function is you should be able to delete files deleting files by freeing or deallocating disk blocks or sectors and also keeping record of all those free blocks then the file system is responsible for movement of files moving files from one directory to another or from one partition to another or maybe from one hard disk to another hard disk then a file system must allow users and programs to access the files by accessing files i mean reading and writing and of course file systems are persistent files must persist even when the power is switched off a good file system must offer security and we know that security is one of the important aspect and it is normally implemented by using permissions that is allowing only authorized users to read or to write or to execute the files 
a new aspect most of the new file systems offer are journaling the file system which offers this characteristic are known as journaling file systems in a journaling file system the changes are first written to a journal on disk the journal is flushed regularly writing the changes in the file system journaling keep the file system in a consistent state and therefore you don't need to do a file system check after an unclean shutdown or in case of a power failure last but not the least every file system has its own support of max file size and we have seen about the max partition size as well now let us move on the terminal and see what all different file systems are available to us in linux a microsoft user normally do not have to worry about the file systems because they only work with one file system that is ntfs or maybe if you are an old user you may be working with the fat32 or fat16 or fat12 maybe on the contrary a linux user has a variety of flavors of file system to choose from let me man fs and you can see a lot of file systems from which a linux user can choose from let's have a brief review of this page as we all know that linux was inspired from the Minix. So the first file system that was used on Linux was the EXT, which was derived from the Minix file system. It was followed by EXT2, Extended 2 file system. In Extended 2 file system, you can have a maximum file size of 2 TB and a maximum partition of 32 TB it was soon taken by ext3 which was a journaling version of ext2 file system with the same max file size and max partition size that is 2 TB and 32 TB from 2008 onward we have the ext4 file system in all Linux machines ext4 file system support 16 TB max file size and 1 exabyte maximum partition size high performance file system used by OS2 then we have ISO 9660 which is a CD-ROM file system it was introduced in 1988 it was independent of the hardware byte ordering and was independent of the operating system as well the main objective was to make every CD-ROM readable on every computer. Before ISO 9660, systems use high Sierra file system for reading CD-ROMs. We do have Rockridge, Juliet, Altorito as well. Altorito is uh, the f CD file system which enables booting from the CD-ROM. Today, UDF format, Universal Disk format is used by most optical CDs and DVDs as well. JFS is the journaling file system of IBM. Minix, the standard file system for Minix operating system. We have MS-DOS. We have NFS used for network file systems. And the famous NTFS, new technology file system. And this new technology file system offer a max file size of 2 TB and a max partition size of 256 TB. We have the PROC file system. We talked about it some days back. SMB as well. Then we have the XFS. Okay, ZFS is not there. 
right gentlemen uh, the latest file system that has changed the world is ZFS Zeta byte file system which is a 128 bit file system with no practical limitation on file size and directory entries it follows the copy and write transactional design everything is checksummed has read Z protection as well as offer disk scrubbing so if time permits someday I'm going to have a session on this file system as well let us move ahead gentlemen and move on the terminal and and see what we can do as far as the formatting of a files partition is concerned well let me recall in the previous session we have seen that once we get a new hard disk from the market the first thing we do is we partition the disk as per our needs we have seen various partitioning utilities like the F disk we have also seen G disk we have seen part partition editor part add and G part add the G DOM the GUI version of the partition editor so let let me let me see what we have done using F disk if I use F disk and give it a hyphen L option with the name of the block device so let me shrink the size we can we can see from this portion which we have seen in the previous session as well that I have eight partitions with me SDA 1 SDA 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 and if you can recall from the previous session SDA 1 SDA 2 and SDA 3 these three partitions are the primary partitions while SDA 4 was the extended and 5 6 7 8 are logical you can observe this from here as well as far as STF4 is concerned its ID is 5 and its type is extended while the rest are 83 which are the data partition for Linux and if you recall SDA 8 is the swap partition having the ID of 82 right gentlemen uh, keep this thing in mind that all these partitions already have some file system on them but even now we can reformat them so let us see what all tools or file system build commands are available to us in Linux if you want to see that there must be an S bin let me do S bin Oops. There are a lot of a lot of commands let me do S bin and and let me let me use MKFS most of the commands start with MK and MKFS okay so uh, these are the commands that are used for for formatting MKFS is the basic command that that is used to format let me do man MKFS MKFS build a Linux file system but it says that this MKFS front end is deprecated in favor of the file system specific commands like this MKFS dot the type of the file system you want to use yes we have these over here MKFS dot ext2 MKFS dot ext3 MKFS dot ext4 MKFS dot vfat and so on so it will always be better if if we use these commands so before I use these commands let me dig out some more information about the existing file system uh, that is uh, there on 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 different partitions of my hard disk there is a command lsplk this command basically lists information about all available block devices attached with with our system so you see there are two devices one is SDA and the other is SR0 which is a CD-ROM 
right now I am not interested in 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 this CD-ROM I'm just interested in the first SCSI block disk drive so let me mention its name over here div SDA SD SCSI A is the first disk now I, I do not get that CD-ROM over here so it tells me that there are eight partitions we have the major and the minor versions we will talk about this uh, when we will be talking about the device file system then we have the RM and size let me mount point let me let me I don't want to enter into into this discussion so let me give some option to LSPLK that I just want to see name and type of the disk or the partition and the file system type and the partition type and the size and the mode of div SDA okay uh, okay now this is of our interest right now so we see that the first partition is SDA1 it is a partition the file system type is ext4 and if you recall from the previous session the partition type is hex83 remember hex83 is for the Linux data partition hex5 is for the extended partition and hex h2 is for for this web partition and this is the size and and this is the mode of of this particular partition block device having read write permission to the owner and read write permission for for the groups as well okay gentlemen uh, a device which is sta1 it can be identified by by either by by the name like div sda1 it can also be identified by a label which you might have given to your USB devices but to uniquely identify a partition you use UUID universally unique identifier which is very long and at times we use part UUID so let's see these things let's see these things using the LSBLK command I want to see now the name label UUID part UUID of div SDA okay there is a typo part okay fine let me shrink it so this is the command which I gave and I just said that show me uh, the name of the device and the label we don't have any label given to any partition we have the UUID this is a long hex, hex number that uniquely identifies this this partition then we have a smaller uh, partition UUID and you can see uh, this portion is same for all the partition then we have 0102 and so on to it uh, okay I, I don't want to I don't want to uh, see this again and let me let me use this command now and let me do plus okay now it is readable now it is better I, I right now I'm I'm seeing the names of all the devices I'm seeing the part UUID of all the devices and I can see the label as well uh, if you want to assign label uh, you can use a command uh, e2 yes e2 label E2 label. Let me do man E2 E2 label. So this is used to change the label on EXE234 file systems. Uh, okay. So let me change the label uh, using the command E2 L A B E L of div SDA. Let's suppose six and make it uh, RF007. Okay and let me repeat the above command and now you can see that sda6 partition is having the label rf007 similarly you can assign labels to all the partitions and if you want to undo that just assign it an empty string so it will be removed uh, right gentlemen uh, after having uh, 
this much of information about your disk and your partitions now let us see the file system types as well the file system types of these partition is not available over here let me give the command lsblk give it an iphone o option and say it. show me the name the file system type the size uh, of all the partition in the device sta okay now over here i have the file system type as well so that means since i'm using this system the first partition the second partition and all the partitions have been formatted appropriately with the file system exe4 which is the default file system for linux remember you you don't see any file system for for the extended partition and you see the uh, swap file system type for the swap partition uh, okay so uh, now let's decide to change the file system of, of a particular partition let me change sds7 sds7 okay so uh, the command is mkfs uh, dot something man mkfs dot let me say which file system i want to put in uh, vfat okay mkfs dot vfat so this is the command which i'm going to use to put a file system on 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 sds7 so mkfs uh, remember gentlemen i am root i am root so that's why i'm not using sudo right now so mkfs dot vfat div sda7 oops it says that uh, sd7 contains a mounted file system okay now what is mounting okay we will discuss this topic in next session inshallah but for the time being to make it work let us let's just see uh, along with the size let me add this this option as well to tell you okay now we have the mount points as well remember gentlemen whenever you 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 do a partition you put a file system on it and if you want to use it afterwards you need to mount it on some mount point I will talk about this uh, in detail in the next session but right now let me just unmount this partition let me just unmount sda7 from from the mount point opt so u mount is used to unmount and sda7 so i have unmounted it let me repeat the same command mkfs.vfat and now this is successful and to confirm it let me check out sda7 is having the file system vfat and of course it is not mounted right now right and when it is very important to understand that before you format a file system um, before you format a partition with a particular file system there should not be any data on that partition if there is you you need to take a backup of that so let me change it back okay let me do mkfs ext4 let me change it back to ext4 i say yes and once i do that you you see it uh, do a lot of lot of uh, household chores like uh, writing inode tables and allocating group tables and so on and so forth so the point of interest is that sds7 is again having the file system ext4 now let me mount it as well so that uh, i should not have any problem while using it later on to mount it i use the command mount sda7 which is used to identify the partition and this is the mount point opt so it is mounted if you want to confirm you can see it was sda7 was not mounted over here but now sta7 is mounted on a mount point that is opt once again gentlemen we will study the concept of file system mounting in next session inshallah hope today's session was uh, informative i wish you all the best allah hafiz <laughs>